I'm Tavita Rezer and uh, I'm an artist, I'm a yogi, I teach yoga, I'm a doula and I'm uh, studying right now to become a farmer. The yearning behind everything that I do it's to uh, connect with life with the most um, depth and intimacy to become uh, intimate with the, the process of life and uh, through my uh, artworks I share this, uh, this journey of connection this uh, journey uh, from uh, emotional, political, spiritual of how to, how to connect so this is uh, essentially um, a technological journey what technologies do we have available to feel more connected with everything around us, with everything within us and these different um, paths the path of science, the path of uh, spirit but somehow, somewhere they, they meet and in that place where they meet is, uh, it's what I'm really interested in it's how to allow worlds to coexist how to even potentially allow worlds, worlds to um, collaborate like uh, they don't have to compete for, uh, for meaning, for truth in this way um, we're both seeking the same thing we're all on the same journey, you know, back home back to ourselves, trying to, to thrive trying to, to just live, you know in a way that's uh, supportive and uh, nourishing and uh, fulfilling My artistic agenda is expressed in how I um, use my materials and also the selections of the materials which I use in my work. Um, it's also embedded in uh, the whole process of uh, my work and how I make the works. And my process starts from the mobilization of the materials themselves. I, I have a team which is uh, in the various dubbing areas in Harare which helps me mobilize the materials. How we have been um, managing our environment as people in this modern era is also very questionable. Our everyday, our routine uh, use of these mostly plastic items which I use in my work. Human behaviors towards the environment and uh, how plastic have really been uh, a challenge to on how they can manage the waste of the remains of our daily uh, consumables, our daily waste. And before their falls, tables were laid plenty, layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. This is my proposal for uh, the exhibition. I don't know what it is, uh, but what I know will transpire would be uh, an invitation to a banquet. And uh, this banquet, uh, we really don't know what will be served. It is an engagement with etiquette, it's an engagement with uh, noble practices, it's also an engagement with food. I mean, food is a basic, uh, basic need of humankind. But food is also one of those things that can, that is the source of a lot of misery, and a lot of poverty in the world just because uh, certain people are excluded from participating in uh, this pleasure that everybody uh, should enjoy. The element will, will 
feature again elements like flags, like standards, and, um, yeah, symbology or uh, symbolizations that uh, sort of aligns with a critique of empire. Translations, I am the archive, is, um, it is in fact something that it, it is part of, of what I do every day is to, to accept failure in translating um, different contexts to each other. And I think being this kind of in this position, this in between position between languages, in between landscapes, in between contexts in general, I think it's, it's given me this sense of really having an overall look into how, you know, humans, how societies function. And as I, I take my time to observe these things and to translate them, you know, into a work of art, into a relationship. Hi. My name is Kelvin Hazel. I'm an artist. I'm based in Accra in Kumasi. No one should become a subject of which another benefits in an unequal power dynamic. It should be the relationship should be premised on equality and not a master-servant relation such that the ones with the means of production are the ones that benefit from the fruits planted by those that labor and I think this is what my work in the exhibition is proposing. So when we say this is not Africa, it is to re-emphasize the notion of equality of intelligence, equality of one that wills themselves to be equal to all. And that is essentially what I would want audiences to ponder on, engage with, masticate on, chew on, swallow. And even if you shit it out, you don't flash it away, you stare at it and let that become your bane in order to surmount any ego that deceives anyone of their importance over others. artistic agenda is very much focused on understanding um, who I am and on doing what I want.
what is important for me. Um, with that, I mean, my agenda is very much based on this exploring and experimenting um, forms of um, understanding myself and understanding my history, knowing that a large part of my history is not documented, is not written, is not archived. I'm very concerned with the repetition of violence, cyclical violence, and now this cyclical violence happens because history has not been told properly. Um, like a ghost that keeps haunting and um, haunting our present because it it was not told properly. So um, I'm very focused on storytelling and using storytelling with with all vocabulary and all the words and all the languages and images to tell things, to revise things and to tell them anew or and to experiment um, new languages. This is my agenda, agenda of uh, decolonizing, of, of uh, creating um, myself and you, I would say. My agenda is to explore the material and metaphysical conditions for decolonization. This means I'm interested in what this world must be and what this world must do in order for a new world to become possible or impossible. One condition of decolonization is that we start to see that land is also a verb, that land is something we do, and that maybe history is how we land. This artwork tries to make this idea visible. It's a working through of this thought. It's also a working through of the realization that it's almost impossible to make immaterial knowledge, thought, and feeling visible. Let's just say that a diagram is a drawing that thinks, but a diagram cannot think alone. A diagram always requires some interpretation. The secrets of this work, this decolonial work, are somewhere between what is known and what is unknown, what is knowable, what is unknowable, what is possible and what is impossible. I'm Tracy Nakoshi Thompson. I am an artist, a Ghanaian artist working in uh, Kumasi and Accra. Basically about my work, I deal with food, especially with the context of art beyond certain notions about still life. It revolves around my interest concerning plasticity and mutations because I'm dealing with food as a material body and what it does in terms of relations, not only with humans but also extended in terms of material agency what does it do in making in using food particularly with my work with bioplastics and using starch so i'm dealing with the relations of which starch as a living body and um, which is also thermoplastic and how it relates to you know temperature changes and also with microbial activity of fermentation. So that's basically what my work is about. Cascading Royal Cookies. Yes, like many of my works, the, the first impression is about ambiguity, the ambiguous nature of which um, you meet these foods. And it helps to rethink certain notions of the foods we um, uh, perhaps consume and what does that consumption mean if it's not necessarily food that is bought for human consumption here is the case where um, it's cut off from that kind of um, interaction so yeah so that's the kind of ambiguity that uh, uh, I hope for the audience to reflect on
was born in Harare, Zimbabwe, when it was still called Salisbury, Rhodesia, in the late 70s. And I've seen the country transition from Rhodesia to Zimbabwe, and I've seen it go through some radical changes in my lifetime. This includes the farm invasions in the early 2000s, and a large exodus of Zimbabweans into the diaspora. And my artistic agenda looks at this personal history of mine and looks at the politics and the history of this part of the world where I find myself in. It's a fraught history that began with the first settlers, the colonial invaders that came to this part of the world and subjugated the local people both in South Africa and in Zimbabwe and in most of Africa. The Guy Fawkes mask that became a, a cultural meme in the last few years with the activist group Anonymous. I look back at the roots of uh, this mask and find it interesting how this leapt from a graphic novel by Alan Moore into popular consciousness and inspired movements around the world to adopt this mask. And this is an example of, uh, of life imitating art, if you like. Alan Moore created the book V for Vendetta using Guy Fawkes' mask as an inspiration, a way of bringing him back into popular consciousness. And my version of these masks also look at the way that African masks have been divorced from their original context and are no longer used in the ways that they were made to be used hundreds of years ago. In fact, African masks nowadays are made almost specifically for the tourist market. And the best examples of African masks are often housed outside of Africa in collections in the West, in Europe and America. And these masks of mine are intended to be shown in the West as a reminder of this terrible legacy that occurred in Africa, but also playing with the current popular culture iconography that hopefully people can understand. Um, the objective of my work is to um, somehow work with the idea of dignity or consoling. Um, maybe this is because of the times we live in, our collective histories or alternative histories. I also would like to use this through ideas of mythology and how f nations are founded and how um, human beings um, somehow configure or re-identify themselves through nationalism and many identities. I use um, avatars as well to um, get to the point of using mythology and also critiquing um, status quo and histories and where personally I find myself. So you can say it's autobiographical because the agenda is to, in, like to have people um, or the audience put themselves or be represented so that both of our, um, our, um, our, our experiences are enhanced. The avatar I've chosen for the Ara show is Maibuye Kwezi. Maibuye means return the land. And he basically returns to water and becomes a merman as a reenactment um, that is inspired by a series or a spike in suicides that happened when um, MK or Mkondo Wesizwa soldiers came back to an area called Ndanzani in the Eastern Cape. Um, we were always warned about uh, when we used to go swim in the Grinica Dam um, to be aware of our, our merman. And I find that this is a way in which maybe a trauma, a community's trauma, found a way in which it could be, um, let's say, communicated to children through storytelling, through mythologies, in this sense, an urban township mythology. My name is 
Ezro Ben Tamaskan. I'm an artist from Ethiopia. My artistic agenda usually focuses on uh, matters that surrounds my um, environment, which includes how a community forms its gathering, how it maintains uh, connectivity, and what it means for a community to be built, to be maintained, and to be dismantled. The relationship between um, the audience in Orhus and my work, originally I envisioned it to be a newspaper that's physically to be witnessed, to be translated, to be understood, and to be misunderstood. Where, you know, the point of lost in translation could be the power to hold us together somehow. Uh, but at this, time, at this time, because of uh, the current situations that we're in, the entire idea of, you know, the performance that I've been planning, um, the engagement that has been planned uh, to happen between the audience, the artwork and the artists actually is now completely shifted into you know a relationship between an individual's um, presence physically having to gaze through a newspaper that is framed. As a matter of fact usually I would write it in Amharic so people are not supposed to be understanding the newspapers but it has to be comprehended as an information and I have zero idea on what it would mean for the audience to have witnessed it as an let's say painting object on the wall framed uh, in the museum context that I would actually appreciate to to have a response at the end of the show. Thank you. My name is Belize Angewa and I am a visual artist uh, based in Johannesburg, South Africa. I work predominantly with silk, so I'm an artist specializing in textile, um, but I also use other materials. I feel that there is importance in the everyday and the mundane, and I like to put a focus on that and to poeticize it and to put it center stage. But also it's to really just highlight the importance of the work that women do every day on the home front, you know, that keeps our society moving and the things that are not seen or acknowledged. That's one of the reasons, you know, why I make my work is, is to highlight that position of women. Um, but also one of the other reasons that I make my work is, is to, to actually to put a focus on the daily lives of a black woman because I feel that historically we've been silenced and I also feel that you know, we haven't really had a voice, and this is to give a voice to a sector, sector of society that's been forgotten, silenced, marginalized, objectified historically, and, um, and it's really just, just to access a power that's, that's been um, latent. What I hope, you know, the audience will take away is that first of all, they will understand part of my message, part of what I'm trying to achieve, which is, first of all, you know, to highlight the daily life of a black woman and to put it, you know, center stage, to, to give space to, to this particular um, um, kind of configuration of human identity that I represent. Um, but it's also to, to find the connection in humanity, you know, to really just say that we may all look different and dress different and have different rituals, but really we're just human and we're all just like each other and we all go through the same things every day and we also experience the same challenges every day and that you know it's it's not unique to a particular kind of um sector or you know continent or whatever that some things are actually universal
name is Jeanette Ehlers. I'm a visual artist from Denmark, uh, based in Copenhagen. For this exhibition, I'm showing photographies from 2009 called Atlantic Endless Row. Atlantic Endless Row deals with Denmark's erasure of our colonial past and the invisibility um, of um, this part of our history, this unpleasant part of our history that um, also speaks to our society of today. Erasing the figures in the image talks about this, it talks about the erasure of our colonial past. It also speaks about um, the notion of enslaving someone. What does it mean to enslave someone? Uh, well, it means to take away everything, your identity, your family, your language, your land, your country, everything is taken away from you. I Am Queen Mary is a collaborative project between Lavon Bell from St. Croix and me, and it was inaugurated in March 2018, a year after the centennial of Denmark selling the Virgin Islands to the U.S. Um, I Am Queen Mary is a um, seven meter tall sculpture um, that commemorates the histories of resistance to slavery and to colonialism and at the same time creates a space for black people in public space uh, where we can see ourselves uh, represented first of all but also represented in a powerful way. Um, 98% of the public uh, sculptures or statues that are in Copenhagen represent white males. So this project completely um, created a huge manifestation of black uh, existence, uh, black presence. Je m'appelle Barthélemy Togo, je suis artiste plasticien. Je viens d'une famille modeste. Mon père était mécanicien chauffeur et ma mère était ménagère. J'ai eu une éducation chrétienne. L'idée c'était que je puisse obtenir des diplômes et être fonctionnaire au Cameroun. Quand je suis arrivé au secondaire, j'ai découvert les œuvres de, de, de Titien, de Goya, de Rembrandt. J'ai été fasciné par le clair-obscur, par la dextérité, la, la maîtrise du dessin. J'essaye de m'exprimer avec toute cette richesse de technique que j'ai eu à apprendre. L'artiste a envie de s'exprimer. C'est le rendu plastique qui est la finalité de mon discours. Et donc je dois utiliser tout ce qui est mis à disposition, que je sais faire. Je suis artiste et je dois parler par le rendu des formes. Je n'hésite pas à utiliser la gravure ou la céramique ou la sculpture pour parler. My artistic agenda has been always about um, commemorative practice, so the act of remembering. And um, memory can be a very fickle thing, so it, it really is for me an exercise in, in trying to remember. And in, in trying to remember, I would also like to acknowledge, so the people that I would like to acknowledge um, in my work throughout my practice has been um, the lives of women who've been omitted out of history and mythology. And my work has been to bring back these stories and these histories of women, particularly black women, who um, have been a part of making of nations. Um, but now it extends, so the act of remembering and memory, whether it be through um, moving moving works or through photography or through 
I suppose the more common way of remembering in public spaces is like through um, plaques and, and architecture and, and statues. So Signal Her Return is a work that speaks to, um, it's an ode to a woman who have died under undignified circumstances and really the work is to pray for their lives to be sent back to heaven or a place of peace um, after they have been violently killed. In South Africa we have um, a very high femicide statistic um, but this is something that I noticed that around the world um, there are various ways that women have been murdered throughout history that is not uh, um, remembered or acknowledged or celebrated even as public holidays or as monuments as much as men's histories are who have also been violently killed and so in this work i bring about the the the, the ways that women have been killed throughout um, slavery but also the soft violences that happen within the home domestic violence where it's um you have you have intimate partner um, violences where men or husbands you know put down their women and that in itself is something that is very undignifying and dehumanizing for women A lot of the work I'm trying to do is really about asking questions, observing society and trying to find pertinent ways to answer and ask some of the more challenging questions that I personally don't always know how to frame or uh, address. And I think that for me, being a visual person who's interested in performance and how people go about doing things, um, performance art has been the way that I have been able to address some of these questions. I would say my work at Eros, Wash Me Clean, um, sort of is asking about this idea of repairing and restitution, and if it's possible to mend what is broken. I think that um, it clearly kind of reflects my artistic agenda in the sense that I am really inquisitive and wanting to, through practice and through movement and performance, ask these questions if it's possible, and perhaps even start getting something close to an answer through the performance work, which is quite literally the mending of the body, of a body, and seeing what that actually looks like in order for us to really be able to answer if it's possible to truly mend something.